Hello, it's Victoria from Coastal Themes and I'm here with a tutorial on advanced absolute positioning. So we've briefly touched on absolute positioning in the past with our relative versus absolute positioning video tutorial, but in this video I'm going to be solely focusing on absolute positioning, showing you how to create this design in Framer. So if I hit preview, you can see we have a little spaceman, little astronaut. In the bottom left corner we have a ring around the word great and when I scale everything stays put, everything moves with what we want it to move with, which is fantastic, exactly what we want. So I've got all these designs here, I'm going to delete them <laughs> and we're going to start from scratch, which is great. <laughs> so hopefully I won't need these again. <laughs> Let's delete. So now we're left with our first desktop frame. So I've got my assets here. I'm going to start by creating my text file. And we will quickly style this up. Perfect. So this is all styled up and we can see that this text is sitting relative to its parent frame, which is the desktop in this case. If I were to nest this text inside a frame, it would sit relative in that frame. So this means if I duplicate this text and we'll make it like so, when I move this text around, it is moving relatively in this desktop. So I can change how things sit by changing the layout properties on the desktop frame. So I can make things a grid or a stack. I can change the direction to be horizontal or vertical. I can change the distribution so they can do, be distributed at the start, at the end, with space between, space around, or spaced evenly. So if you're familiar with flex on CSS, you'll be familiar with kind of these distribution terms. And then we can also change alignment, change the space between, and change the padding around, and so on. So that is relative positioning. We won't get too deep into that, but ultimately things are pretty fixed and the layers on your layers panel directly talk to the order of the layers on the design. So absolute positioning is great, so we'll keep this layer, text layer here. So what I'm after is to put this green vector around the word great. So let me just rearrange the text to be like this. So now I've got this text, it's still sitting relatively inside my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and create a frame for the text to sit within. So let's remove the styling. We'll copy this text and we'll drop it in this frame. We're going to make sure that the frame is a stack in itself. So right now there's no layout applied, but if we hit this plus button, we can create a stack and change the direction. So now, if I bring in this vector, you'll see anywhere I'm putting it, it will now be in this horrible relative positioning. It's going to be fixed. It's not going to be where I want it. I want it to be sitting behind this, right? So I will drop this vector inside the stack and we will change its positioning to be absolute. So absolute positioning is this magical positioning where we can kind of drag it wherever we want. And so if we look at this positioning kind of pin grid on this side, you can see we have four different things happening. We have the distance from the top, so the top of its parent. So if I make it zero, it will pin to the top. The distance from the left. So if I make this zero, it will pin to the left. The distance from the right. So if I make this zero, it will pin to the right. And if I make the bottom zero, it will pin to the bottom. So now what's happened is that I have said to Framer that this vector is now, must always be pinned to the top, the left, the right, and the bottom, 
with zero pixel space, so it's pinned. So the size of the vector is now compromised. So regardless of whatever happens, if I change the size of the stack, this vector will move with it and it will always follow those rules. So if I unpin these, I can now resize this. Let's just bring it back to normal. There we go. <laughs> and you can see now that it is only pinned to the bottom at zero. So this means if I moved and expanded my stack, you can see this vector is pinning to the bottom with a zero pixel space. It's perfectly pinned to the bottom there. So that being said, you can see how we can kind of manipulate absolute positioning. So while we still have mega flexibility, we can make sure that things can scale correctly. And this is very important for when we get into responsive design. So I'm going to hit this plus and make two more breakpoints. We've got tablet and we've got mobile. So you can see how if I was positioning this element in the desktop as its parent and I pinned it to the bottom at 436, you can see how this can kind of get out of hand when we get to phone because a phone isn't 1000 pixels high, a phone's probably 800 pixels high. So you can see that if this element is 463 pixels from the bottom, it might look fine on desktop, but when we get to mobile, realistically, it's not going to work. So what we need to do is put this vector back into the stack. So now this vector is talking to its parent, which is this stack only. We'll change this back to zero. We'll prioritize this pinning only. So if wherever it's positioned left, top and right doesn't really matter as long as it's always pinned zero to the bottom. I'm just going to resize this to be how I want it to be. And I think that's fine. So now you can see there's a, it's 11 from the bottom, but that's fine because my text is always going to be sitting tight in this stack. So now let's move on to tablet. We can see that the text is kind of falling out the page. So let's just fix this. So by clicking on the stack, we will make it fill the page and the same with the text can fill the stack. The height can fit the content and then we'll make our small adjustments. So now this vector is pinned one from its parent frame. And then finally, we'll get to mobile. Mobile, I'm actually going to need to change the size of the text. So we'll make that 40 should be fine. We'll adjust the width of the parent stack. I actually want to change the padding on the page itself. There we go. And then, so now that we've organized our text and our stack correctly, we can now reposition this vector. So you can see absolute positioning zero from the bottom of its parent frame. So that's looking really great. So let's give it a preview and see if there's any issues. So desktop moves into tablet and moves into mobile. Fantastic. And then we're going to pull in this image. So this image I want to place here, but now when I'm dragging this image into my desktop frame, we can see it's falling into the relative positioning. So we're going to click on absolute and now we can move it where we want. So I want it to always sit in the bottom left, regardless of the screen size. And there's going to be a bit of a negative pinning. So it will always be 
minus 91 pixels falling out the left side, minus 88 pixels falling out the bottom side. This is just so we never see this ugly corner, really. <laughs> so tablet, I'm going to just adjust the size, maybe change the distance, and then finally mobile. It's going to be quite a lot smaller. There we go. And it's really as easy as that. So now when I click preview, I've got my astronaut here on the left. If I start to scale down, you can see the astronaut stays put bottom left. I haven't used any relative positioning. It's all pinned to that bottom left corner and the text stays where I want it with that ring around it. So you can see absolute positioning is super flexible. You can choose where things get pinned to in relation to the parent frame they're in and that's how you kind of control its position. So there is a little bit of trial and error and it's also up to you as the designer and the builder of your frame of site to decide whether absolute positioning is the best solution. I could have done this in a multitude of different ways. I could have put the astronaut inside a relatively positioned frame to the desktop and then position the astronaut in the left of that frame. There's so many different ways to go about this, but sometimes relative positioning is just the easiest. Just be careful when you're looking through your responsive design that things scale correctly, and that's why testing and kind of always using preview mode, even publishing it to a test platform, is really beneficial when you are bringing in absolutely positioned elements to your designs. So that's it from me today. If you have any questions about absolute positioning, feel free to drop them in the comments below. We are absolutely ready to make so many videos on this for you until you completely understand the power of absolute positioning. And on that note, I will leave it there and see you in the next video. Bye.